Hey everybody, today I'd like to take you on a little journey that I went on this last week and what I was trying to do is better familiarize myself with the parameters of each of the sound engines, the synthesizer engines within the OP-1 and uh, as I got to just kind of drilling down on one, I was playing with the uh, with the cluster here, I believe, and uh, kind of just starting at the top of the list. And I, I thought to myself, what if I had an initialized version of each preset, um, a default, as it were, like the most simple version of itself, the most simple version of that uh, synthesizer engine. Um, and as I started doing this, I, I realized that it was also giving me a really good idea of what all these parameters do and um, how they interact with each other. So I'm going to show you kind of uh, what I have set now as my default settings. I've saved these all as patches um, already. So we'll walk through them and I'll kind of show you where I feel like my default settings are for each engine. And uh, if you start watching this video and, and you don't want to do all the work, or uh, you just wanna get these patches, they're gonna be up for a uh, free download on my Patreon. So just uh, click the link below. Um, you can download those today and just drag them straight into your OP1 and get started. But uh, I do wanna start off before we get into the first engine um, with just a couple of things to think ahead about. And one of them is um, for me, because I want the simplest version of myself, I wanna make sure that my effects are off and then my LFO is, is turned off um, before I start working on these and before I start saving anything. Um, and then also personal preference is I want to uh, have my envelope set to something that is gonna be the most conducive for being simple. And for me, it was just this basic square shape so that uh, it makes it real easy to be able to um, you know, make it into a pad really quickly. I can adjust the tail really quickly. Um, yeah, I just feel, feel like this is the most simple shape. I can hold it as long as I want to, or it can just be a real short, um, just a real short, quick envelope. So that's, that's my default envelope. And then, uh, as far as the, the poly settings, I always want it to be on poly for myself because I want to be able to instantly play a chord. Portamento off as a default setting. And then <clears throat> behind the scenes with your effects, uh, you also wanna think about what you want to be the default effect because as you start saving these, even though your effect is off, you want that, uh, that favorite effect to be right there. And for, for me, and we'll get into this a little bit later with the synth engines, but for me it was the filter because not every uh, engine has a filter. So I have my uh, default setting behind the scenes on the filter. And then for the LFO, whatever your favorite LFO is, for me, it's probably value um, followed second by tremolo. So I think for, for almost all my patches, I have uh, value saved as the default, but, uh, but that's off. So I think that covers um, most of the default kind of settings to prepare us to make our initialized patches. All right, now we are going to uh, start in the default. We'll start with the uh, cluster engine here. And uh, right off the bat, my default settings are for the blue knob all the way to the left. And this is actually one engine that's great to start with because you can actually see uh, where your knobs are. When we get into some of the other ones, uh, that's gonna be a little more tricky. Uh, 12 o'clock, left and left, so these ones obviously you can see super easy, but let's just hear uh, the blue knob is the number of waves. Now let's play a C. And what I found interesting about some of these is you don't really know um, or can hear what some of these are doing until you start introducing some of the other um, knobs. So the green one is the filter envelope. That's why I have it in the middle. Almost like a low pass when it's to the right. Maybe, a, and then it's almost like an envelope, uh, envelope follower or like an envelope, uh, a filter envelope, sorry. I guess it's a, a following envelope too. It's just, uh, I think low pass maybe to the right and high pass to the left. I'm just really exploring here and kind of 
not making things up as I go, but trying to describe what I'm hearing. Um, the white is going to be the detune, which is all the way. Another, pr another parameter you can't really hear in this default state. Now you're kind of starting to hear that phasey kind of um, sound. And the last parameter, the red one, is uh, Unitor, I believe is how the manual describes it. I call it buzz. Kind of brings in the bees, as it were. Swarm of bees, that is. Now you can really hear the, the detune. So let's see if we can just return this. So we got all the way left, 12 o'clock, all the way left, all the way left. Simple, simple. And you'll see as I go through these, a lot of them kind of have a similar bass sound. That's kind of what I was shooting for uh, as a jumping off point for like sound design. So next we'll get into the desynth. And this one is uh, particularly tricky, not only because it's a pretty complex engine, but it actually has uh, eight parameters instead of the normal four because you have all the uh, secondary shift parameters. So uh, we'll just go through those parameters real quick. So on the non-shift level, we have the envelope crossfader. Um, it's going to be this guy right here. We have the, the waveform, the envelope, and the cross mod. And then under the shift, we have frequency, waveform, envelope, and filter cutoff um, for the second wave. So my parameters for default are uh, for parameter one, non-shift, all the way to the left. Um, for the waveform, all the way to the left. For the envelope, I have that in the mid midway position, straight up, you can see it there. And for for the uh, for the cross mod, I actually have the, the you can kind of do this to taste, but I have it set. I have number two written down, which is where it's pointing at this number two on the dial. And then for the uh, secondary parameters, I have the frequency. I have it all the way to the left. For the waveform, I have that all the way to the left. You can see that all the way down at the bottom with the green there. For the envelope, I have that set to midway as well. And for the frequency cutoff, I have that pointing at the number three there. So, so very simple, very simple sound. Let's just explore the parameters just a little bit. You can see actually when I hold it down, it becomes not so simple of a sound, but I tried to get it as simple as I could. crazy because that says square but the way they're interacting you get a very kind of noisy that kind of fades out but it's really hard to articulate what these do or understand it but my hope in in doing this was to uh, provide myself a little more understanding and hopefully do the same for you and then the attack becomes like a fade in a slow attack and then when you come the other way becomes a short decay. So it's a weird kind of double interaction. That's why I went with the, uh, the mid position there. And then this is that cross mod. And then for the secondary functions, it's gonna be a two hand job here. gets crazy real quick when you start. I'm um, oh, sorry, this is the frequency. It's a little bit more of a, it's hard to really understand. Sometimes I think this first cross mod between the two of those really uh, affects the um, interaction of the two different oscillators. Like I said, this is probably one of the most complicated ones, 
I think also as I was playing with it, it might also be one of the ones that can uh, yield some of the best results and the, some more uh, unique results. Uh, and then we have uh, the envelope for the second one. We don't get quite a drastic as we did uh, with the other one, with the amplifier envelope. And then the last one is uh, filter cutoff frequency. See, it becomes like this crazy kind of high pass that just takes everything out at one point. All right, next up is the digital synth. And uh, for those four parameters, we have the wave shaper, the octave, the detune slash ring modulation, and the digitalness. So for the wave shaper, I have it all the way to the left. For the octave, um, I have it set to the midpoint. You kind of just kind of almost want to do that by ear where you want the, uh, the, the pitch of the default to be. Um, then with the white is a detune and ring mod. I have it set to midway, kind of right between those two effects. And then the, for the digitalness, I have it all the way to the left. So here's the uh, wave shaper. Here is the uh, octave. Pretty easy to hear. So just kind of have that to taste of where you want where you want that default octave to be. I think mine was right about there. Uh, and then the detune and ring mod, like I said, to the left is detune and to the right is ring mod. You can hear that detune. You'll actually see the graphic change, I think, when you get to the midway point and start getting in the ring mod, you'll see like a drastic change. Yeah, you see how, see how it jumps right there? That's when you're kind of entering the, the ring mod stage. So for setting your default, wait for it to jump and just kind of be on either side of it there, I think. And then uh, the last one, the digitalness, I have that all the way to the left. Pretty easy to hear. And then you're back to your simple version of that one. Next up is the DNA. This is a beast that's uh, very hard to tame. Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> This was probably one of the more challenging ones for me um, besides the Descent. Uh, to find a, a default. So um, for the DNA, this is the filter molecule size, the wave number or the cell interaction, the wave modifier type, and noise. So doesn't sound very simple, but bl believe me, it's about as simple as I could get. So uh, let's just start with the more obvious one here, the noise. pretty obvious so that's a lot more simple um, the wave modifier type I have all the way to the left as well left or right might be a simple version I just felt like left sounded a little bit more pure um, and then for the uh, wave modifier type this was just a real guess. I, I believe I had mine all the way to the left, but well, maybe not. That does sound pretty horrible. I guess I actually had it all the way to the right. I had my note written down there wrong. Oh. And then, so that is all the way to the right. And then for the mil filter molecule size, I had it somewhere in the middle, I believe, but this, this one I think would be to taste. You can, you can hear we've got all these set right, um, and this one is kind of not going to be quite as radical. Almost sounds like a low pass filter there. Just find a good, find a good spot in the middle there that you like. Next up is going to be the Dr. Wave. And uh, this one was a little bit tricky as well, not quite as bad as the others. Um, but we have 
the wavelength and type, the filter, and the phase of the filter, I believe. Not the phase of the filter, but the phase of the waveform, and then a chorus. So uh, let's start from the right-hand side this time again. So with the chorus, I have it turned all the way to the left. Um, with the phase, we had it to taste, which I'll get to here in a second. With the filter, I also had to taste. And then with the wavelength, it was really hard to understand what was going on here, but I actually did it kind of visually. So as you're scrolling through here, you, we're all familiar with this cool sound it makes when you're moving it. But trying to get like a most pure kind of sine wave kind of sound. And then same here too. I did find that this was kind of a, a pure sounding too, kind of on this side of it. I think I went with something closer to that though. Um, then the phase was to taste. Kind of depends on almost like what octave you want the default sound to be in. Because it is kind of octaving up or becoming less filtered as you go. So I kind of did this kind of visually and uh, audibly to taste. I think we're somewhere around somewhere around there. And then a chorus we had all the way to the left. There's our chorus, which is actually almost more like a phaser depending on how these two are interacting, right? And back to something close to a default patch here. Next up is the FM and uh, we have FM amount, F, uh, frequency, the topology, which is kind of like the operator order, what order the operators are in, and then uh, detune. And for all these, I had all of them turned all the way to the left, all four knobs um, turned all the way to the left. Really simple. That's, that's the amount of frequency modulation, which is very audible. And then with a lot of these, this is one of them, talking about like interaction and stuff. We don't really hear a lot with, I think most of these. See if, if we don't have, if we're not introducing any FM, you're not really hearing anything. So th this was one that was a good learning experience for me, um, learning kind of how they interact. So let's introduce just a little bit of FM and then we'll hear the frequency. hear the order, the topology, the order of the operators. Kind of cool. And uh, lastly, the detune, which is very audible. It's almost like a, not only a detune, but a LFO, like a sign to the, uh, to the frequency of that detune, like a LFO going to pitch, so. all the way to the left and something pretty simple there. Up next is the phase engine. And for phase, we have phase shift, distortion amount, phase filter, and phase tilt. And I have these uh, all the way to the right, all the way to the right, all the way to the left, and all the way to the left. With these, with the blue and the green, it's going to be kind of these two waves, how they interact with each other. If they're both to the left, they really sound filtered or almost like can't cancel each other out a little bit. Not really sure about the interaction, but I felt like both to the right gave me a nice smooth sound. And then um, with the phase filter, I had that all the way to the left. And with this uh, phase tilt, I had that all the way to the left. This introduces a lot of character. A 
I believe once we start Whenever you got something that maybe actually does sound like a filter, one uh, little side note is maybe on that one, you want to change um, what the default effect is. I think on this one, I actually changed it to the CWO because I felt like when I was playing with some of the parameters, um, some of them gave me more of a filter quality so that I, I didn't need to possibly use that filter um, when doing sound design. Next up is the pulse. And for the pulse, this is, a, I believe, a square wave engine. And it's going to be filter, amplitude, the second pulse, and the modulation. So I went uh, all the way to the right, all the way to the right. I went all the way to the right on this one, but I think it would be kind of to taste. And then uh, with the modulation, I'm in the middle. And the, the modulation's easy to put in the middle. You can see it on the next to the little M there. A lot of modulation. You got the slower modulation to the left and the quicker modulation to the right. Easy to put that in the middle where you're not seeing any movement in a flat line. And uh, just working our way back the other way, we'll go to uh, white, which I said was kind of to taste. I could see maybe going all the way to the left or all the way to the right or anywhere in between. So it sounds a little phasey, but I went all the way to the right. And then same for the amplitude. You can hear it really kills it if you're all the way to the left with that first wave. And then uh, with, the, with the filter, Definitely has a, a low pass filter kind of effect. So um, looks like I did leave the filter on on that one, but maybe that might be uh, one that you want to change um, to a different effect on there. So that is the pulse engine. Next up is the string engine. And for the string engine, we have tension, impulse decay, detune, and impulse type. And I went uh, on this one with all the way to the left, but I think that one might be a to taste. The impulse decay, I went all the way to the left. The detune, it seems like you could go all the way to the left or all the way to the right. And for the impulse uh, type, I kind of put it in the middle, but that might be uh, one that you kind of do to taste. So, so if, we, um, if we pull the tension, I just felt like if I went all the way to the right, there just wasn't like a simple wave you get that nice plucky sound though, if you wanna put your preset default to be there. So I'm all the way to the left, and then on the impulse decay, I'm all the way to the left as well. Kinda of introduces that kinda of cool, I don't know, it's almost like a distortion-y kinda of sound. So that's why I went all the way to the left. And then on the detune, I said you could do kinda of left or right, depending on taste. Kind of get a pure sound there. Kind of one of those ones that kind of like the the pulse, you know, maybe anywhere in between, just depending on what you're trying to do or what you think a default sounds like or how you like to use that engine. And then uh, the last is the uh, impulse type. I got mine in the middle. Kind of a lower pass filter kind of sound there. Why I opted to kind of put it in the middle. So last is the uh, the voltage engine, and we have for the voltage amperage amper modulation, amper modulation, uh, induction wave shaper, phase filter, and voltage detune. And I went uh, in the middle um, of the parameter with the with the amper modulation. I went, I think you can go to the left or the right, depending on how you want it to react when adjusting um, the white and the red, which you'll hear here in a minute. And then I uh, went all the way to the left and all the way to the left. And this is one of those that, uh, like I said, with the, uh, with the, with the, with the green, um, so this is one of those ones that you don't really hear a whole lot. 
if you don't have certain things selected. Like you can kind of hear that a little bit, but it doesn't seem to do a whole lot. But when you, and when you do use, and when you attempt the green, you don't really hear a whole lot. But when you start bringing in some of this, you'll start to hear the blue and the green, definitely the green a bit more as we start to bring in some of that white and even more so as we start bringing in the orange, then the, then the green and the blue are gonna make a more audible difference for us. So again, with these down, with these all the way to the left in the default position, you're not gonna hear a whole lot. These are the kind of cool things that I learned as I was creating these presets is kind of how they interact with each other and just kind of getting a little bit better grasp on what these weird names mean. And of course the fun of the OP1 is the unpredictability of it, but it does give a great jumping off point for sound design and just working through this exercise, it gives you a better idea, I think, of what each one of them does. So I hope this uh, video really helped. And like I said, if you just want to download these presets, um, they're all um, that I've created these initialized patches. They're all for download on my Patreon. So just click the link below. And uh, if you found value in this video, if you'd hit the like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching and hope you have a great day.